HK. Um, I'm um, uh, uh, Chief Scientific Officer of company Gentries. Uh, we are consulting company and also uh, we apply very special innovation methodology called Gen trees. Actually, it is trees, but it is our version of trees. Trees is a Russian acronym for theory for inventive problem solving because this methodology originated from uh, former Soviet Union. But now it flourishes all around the globe, uh, particularly uh, in India too because we used to share our methodology and now I'm going to make a review of this uh, methodology. Um, this is mission of trees. Um, uh, it is necessary to make innovations less risky. We need to increase return of investment from innovation. Uh, uh, accelerate introduction of new or improved products and services to the market and increase impact of innovation. Uh, but the question is, uh, I told you that, okay, we need to, uh, to uh, reduce risk. What is wrong with innovation? You know, if you ask any managers, uh, what do you think about innovation? All managers will answer you, oh, you know, innovations are so profitable, they are so good, everybody has to make innovations, all companies should be innovative, it is prospective, it is, it is prestigious. Of course, I very love, I like innovations, I love innovations, right? But try to ask the same question to the same manager in some informal situation. Let's say somewhere in bar, you know, when you and he uh, drink beer. And you got, you will got, will got very different answer. You will get the answer that innovation is a big headache. It is difficult. It is, uh, or they are expensive, they are uncontrollable, unpredictable, and very risky. But you know, the, all managers in the world, they, they have only one real concern, how to reduce risk. It is necessary to reduce risk. But innovation science is extremely risky. You cannot plan, you can predict, you know, will this um, product work or not? If it works, will people buy it or not? If people buy it, uh, uh, will it be profitable enough for the company or not? It's very unpredictable, very risky. That is why, in general, managers and companies try to avoid innovations. They prefer to make some organizational changes, uh, you know, change supply chain, something like that, but not to innovate. For them, innovation is a last resort, which is not good because actually we agree that innovation should be extremely profitable and effective. Look at the, these uh, statistics. Uh, if you, uh, you know, starting from more than 1,000 true ideas, we can see that there are among these one th more than 1,000, there are just about 100 real, you know, interesting, juicy ideas, not incremental, just, you know, good, interesting, uh, potentially effective ideas. If you take these 100 ideas and perform uh, just, uh, you know, some preliminary screening. After the screening, will survive, uh, only 68 um, will survive. After that, you will go to some um, business analysis. And this business analysis also will filter out some ideas. Uh, only 47 will uh, pass this uh, filter. After that, you will go to development mode, right? It will be necessary to address secondary problems, to reduce it to practice. As a result, you will have only 23 uh, products. 
Okay, let's test the, uh, I mean, 33, right? Let's test these products and some products will not pass the test. Now we have only 28 for them. Now let's go to commercialization. And not all uh, products will be commercialized even after testing. And only 24 will be commercialized. And how many of them will be successful? Just 14. Look, compare, we had more than 1,000 true ideas. Okay, we had 100 good ideas. And we have just 14 successful products. It is not good. It is not good because innovation is risky and unpredictable. Look, uh, let's take, uh, let's build a graph uh, how, uh, impact of innovation depends on level of innovations because there are some incremental modification and there are some real radical modifications and curve will look like that right uh, because if you modify your product or service a little bit you cannot anticipate a big impact but if you improve it dramatically impact will be dramatical okay let's make breakthrough mod modification breakthrough innovation stop for a second let's build another graph how probability of success depends on a level of innovation and you will see that unfortunately the curve is opposite because you understand if you modify your product a little bit probably it will work probability of success is very high but if you modify it completely if you change the action principle if you change everything probability of success is very low some company companies try to justify risk i mean uh, to uh, not just justify just to make reasonable risk something like that uh, just optimal risk but look this optimal solution is not the very good because uh, intermediate modification from one point of view uh, already is already quite risky but from another point of view doesn't provide a really powerful impact that is why Remember my first slide, our mission is to reduce risk and to increase impact. Because if you apply a trees methodology, you can push this curve up. In this case, you will be able to afford more radical modification of your product and you will you can anticipate a much higher business impact on the, with the same level of risk that is why our mission is to reduce risk to increase business impact to accelerate an introduction of your products to the market and to increase return of investment actually our methodology our methodology it is quite complex. Look, uh, we have three major blocks, problem identification, problem solving, and concept substantiation. And this methodology is pure rational, no irrational uh, parts, no just, you know, uh, oh, think out of the box, be creative, be brave, no way. It's pure rational, it's like algorithm, consisting of algorithms. These are algorithms incorporated one inside another. But look how many tools, analytical tools, problem solving tools we have, right? A lot. And each tool consists of sub tool. I mean, uh, uh, some steps and each step is also a tool with its own uh, steps, rules, recommendations, illustrating examples. It is very complex. And now I have just limited time to make overview of this methodology and convince you that this methodology could be very useful uh, for you, for you personally, for uh, your students, for companies where your students are going to work. Okay, but you know what, if you have so many steps and you try to cover everything,
it means that for each tool I will have just one minute to describe, right? And after th such a brief description, people will have impression, well, yeah, probably this methodology is quite interesting, but the understanding will be very, very fuzzy and very, very superficial. That is why I decided to apply different approach. Instead of making this very, very general overview, I decided to take one small piece of methodology and describe it and illustrate it with some examples and people will understand our approach. And after that, they will be able to multiply, okay, this is a small piece and if all pieces work uh, the same, it means this methodology really effective. But you know, it's algorithm when each step prepares information to another step how to describe only one piece. But I found one uh, analytical tool which is quite isolated. It is independent. We can use it independently from other uh, tools. That is why it is easy to describe it and you will understand how it works and you will understand flavor of our methodology and effectiveness of this. We call this um, tool feature transfer. And now I'm going to describe only this tool, feature transfer, one small, small piece of methodology. Okay, um, what is it? Let's imagine you have a system and it has a disadvantage and you need to eliminate this disadvantage. But you know, the best invention is no invention, right? It would be nice to apply existing solution because existing solution is very good because somebody already took care about all secondary disadvantages. It works. You can see how it works, right? But how to find this solution? Let's look around. Let's look at uh, competitive systems to our system, system which perform the same function. And if some of this system doesn't have this disadvantage, it means that this problem somehow was solved within this system. But we need to understand how this system, this problem was solved. It means that this alternative system has a feature which allows the system to be that good, right? And our goal is to identify this, this system Identify, identify this feature and transfer this feature to your system. Of course, it will be necessary to solve some adaptation problem, but in general, process will be much more effective, faster, uh, and you will have very good solution. I have just uh, just a funny illustrating example. Look, we have a system, potato. And it has a good advantage, you know, uh, the, uh, the roots of potato are well eatable, right? But you know what, it has a disadvantage. We cannot eat uh, the green part, right? Uh, that is why we just waste our resources uh, to, to make this green part because actually we need only roots, right? How to improve the system? Let's look around. Do we have another product? which doesn't have this disadvantage, which provides an uh, eatable uh, upper part. Okay, we cannot, f we can find it. It is a tomato. You look, tomato is well eatable, but we cannot replace tomato with, uh, use tomato instead of potato because, because it has its own disadvantage. Roots are not eatable. Look, we have two systems which has like a mirror image of advantages and disadvantages. In this case, we need to combine them. We need to transfer feature from one system to another. What's, what feature should be transferred? A tomato, right? And we can combine two systems, solve all secondary problems, and we will have solution. Look at the solution. It is not Photoshop. It is a real plant, uh, you know, it's genetically modified uh, plant and uh, it's like tomato potato, right? Can you see? It works, the approach works. 
It is just illustration. Now let's go to real inventions, real examples, and we will see how it works. But I understand that um, uh, among you, there are a lot of engineers and scientists, but also there are not only engineers, but probably experts in management uh, in the financial sector, right? That is why I will show you that our methodology is so powerful that it could be used not only for uh, technical problems, you know, hardcore metal problems, but also, also for non-technical areas, for a financial, um, uh, you know, uh, domain, and just for management problems, okay? And I will provide you some examples. But let's start from engineering examples. Look, a uh, system is connector. You know, according to the rule in the United States, uh, electrical cable inside the buildings should not be uh, installed uh, like, the, like naked, right? Uh, they are installed inside metal pipes. And these metal pipes perform a number of functions. They protect um, uh, cables against mechanical actions and against water. They should be sealed. Uh, also, they uh, also they could be used as a uh, you know a ground um, connector in case of short circuit. Uh, and it uh, protects against some mechanical, uh, slow mechanical uh, movements of the uh, buildings. Uh, but you know, pipes uh, has limited length. That is why it is necessary to connect them. And for this purpose, uh, people use this uh, uh, nut connector, uh, compression connector. How it works? Look, uh, here, uh, uh, here we have a cone, here we have compression ring, and here we have a nut. And when you rotate the nut, it just pushes uh, this compression, compression ring along the cone. I will show you animation, look. Can you see? Because this connection ring, uh, okay, again. Uh, uh, because it, it moves along the cone, the compression ring compresses the pipe. That is why it provides very strong kind of mechanical action. It holds very well. Uh, it, it, is, it provides a very well, a very good water insulation. A water cannot go inside. And also it scratches uh, the surface of the pipe, removes oxides, that is why it provides very good electrical conductivity. It works perfectly, but it is very inconvenient because, you know, technician has to install it somewhere in a very inconvenient place. But to do it, it is necessary to use two channel locks, you know, to turn the nut, and there are no place there to do it. Uh, plus, uh, you know, it is not easy to install. Sometimes it is necessary to disassemble uh, this connector and uh, put it on the pipe by, uh, part by part because uh, pipes could not be coaxial. It could be like that. A lot of problems. Plus, uh, uh, it is uh, it has a lot of mechanical parts. It is quite expensive. Can you see? System has one advantage. It works perfectly. It's very effective. But it has a huge disadvantage. It is very expensive and inconvenient. Can we find another system, uh, also connector, which is free of these disadvantages? And actually, we can find it. Look, this is our connector, but there is alternative connector, so-called screw connector. It's very simple, a piece of pipe with two screws. You just put two pipes together, you just turn to the screws, and that's it. Look, it is very simple. It is very inexpensive and very easy to install because it can have any diameter and regardless of position of pipes, you can just put them together easily, no problems. But what about effectiveness? What about mechanical strength? There's two small screws, you know, they do not hold pipes very effectively. What about um, uh, water sealing? No sealing, you know, water can go through gaps. 
What about electrical conductivity? This teeny tiny screws do not provide good electrical conductivity. Can you see? We have two systems with alternative images, image of advantages and disadvantages. Now we need to combine them. Actually, there is some rule that among two systems, as a base system, you need to select not the, the most effective, but the simplest one. That is why let's use a screw connector as a base system. And now we need to think huh, why this compression connector works so well. Why is uh, this connector so effective? And actually, if you look at this design, you can see that actually what component is responsible for all its advantages, mechanical strength, uh, good electrical conductivity and water sealing. It is a compression ring. That is why we need to formulate problem how to transfer compression ring to this screw connector. Okay. It is not solution yet, it is a problem, but very good problem. You know, actually it's relatively easy to solve, but if you solve it, you will have connector as convenient and uh, inexpensive as a screw connector and as effective as a compression connector. And we developed the solution. Look, we decided to cut uh, this uh, body of connector to two parts. Right, install here um, uh, compression rings and connect two parts with uh, screws. Actually, there was a secondary problem because now we need to seal not only uh, from this direction, but we need to seal this, uh, this part. And we solved this secondary problem, I will show you. Uh, actually, we decided to make it like a you know, butterfly shape. I just exaggerated. Actually, it's a little bit curved. It's practically invisible. If you take two parts, it's practically invisible curve, but there is a curve. First of all, you just screw one, and here you just hold one pipe, and uh, you just open another end. That is why very easy to install a second pipe. After that, you screw uh, second screws, uh, and just uh, you will deform the metal uh, body a little bit. That is why this um, uh, this connection will be very tight and absolutely waterproofed. Look, system is really cheap, really convenient, and really effective. It is very strong. It holds two pipes very effectively. It's absolutely watertight, and it provides perfect electrical conductivity. Look, we achieved all uh, project goals. Now we are ready to apply it and to patent it. And actually we patented it. Uh, can you see it is US patent and uh, somewhere here there is my last name too, because I participated in this project. To understand the logic, we have the system, it has a disadvantage. We found another system that doesn't have this disadvantage. The identified feature which should be transferred to eliminate the disadvantage. And we formulated problem how to transfer this feature. And we solve the problem. Here we go, we have a solution. I have another example. In this case, it, it was about a pit collection. I hope you know what pit is. It is um, a flammable soil of some swamps. You know, swamps uh, have a soil, and if you dry the soil, it is flammable. We performed this um, project for company from Finland. Finland, it is a small country near, uh, near uh, Russia. Uh, it is a north country. It doesn't have any uh, natural resources, but it has a lot of swamps. That is why why it has a lot of peat. And they use this peat as a, a fuel, uh, just, you know, instead of firewood and uh, electrical stations uh, could use it instead of um, uh, gas or whatever, carbon. Um, uh, instead of coal. Okay, how it works. Actually, uh, first of all, it, uh, they dry this one. Now it is perfectly dry. It's like a large field. 
After that, they plow it, but plow it very, very uh, shallow, kind of uh, just like that, a little bit. Make uh, this um, uh, this layer of peat uh, loose, just like that, and wait until it will dry. You know, actually, it's North Country, a lot of uh, rains, but they wait and wait and wait, and okay, now it is dry. And now it is necessary to collect it as fast as possible because we are going to use it as a fuel, right? That is why if it is wet, the price will go down dramatically. Of course, we can dry it artificially. We can burn some of this material to dry uh, other, uh, other material. But we will generate a lot of CO2, plus we will lose some material and it is long and um, uh, uh, expensive process. That is why it would be nice to collect it while it is dry. How do they collect it? They use, uh, you can see on this picture, a bulldozer. It has very long blade, just 19 meter long. But they put it under certain angle and when they move it, they just, uh, this blade, uh, moves all pit in form and make like a ridge. That's that's why we, they call this bulldozer a uh, pit ridger. Okay, and after that, another machine just collects uh, uh, this pit from ridge and they transport it somewhere, compress it, make like uh, blocks, and they use these blocks as a fuel. But there is a problem associated with this method because look. It is a former swamp. It is not even, right? And we have a contradiction. If you put the blade up, you will collect only dry peat and quality of the peat will be high, but you will lose some um, material, you know, um, on the field and your productiv productivity will be insufficient. Remember, we just dry it uh, and we lose it on the field. Okay, let's put uh, blades uh, down. In this case, you will collect all dry peat, but also this blade will cut uh, some pieces of wet, uh, you know, dense wet peat, and uh, we will mix them, uh, and it means that entire peat will be will have more humid, it will contain more water, and we will reduce uh, the price. Oops. Actually, this company before us, they didn't solve the problem. They decided uh, to use a brute force. They used to train uh, uh, the uh, drivers of these bulldozers during two years. What do you imagine? It's like uh, military fighters. They train them and they, they pay them tons of money and they hope that these super experienced drivers will be able somehow to control this blade because, you know, speed is very high. We need to collect as much as possible. Doesn't work. You know, as a result, uh, the wetness of the pit is excessive and they lose up to 25-30% of dry pit uh, on the field. That is why this company invited us and we performed a uh, just consulting project and uh, to help them uh, to solve this problem. Let's try to solve this problem for them using this um, approach. Okay. We have one system, this bulldozer, and it has well visible advantages. Very simple design, of course, nothing, just piece of blade, right? It has a high productivity, but it has a disadvantage, a, a low selectivity. It is not selective. It uh, collects wet and dry peat, right? Or just lose a lot of peat on the field. Can we find alternative system, which is very selective, which can, can collect only dry powder, right? And will leave this dense wet pit um, untouched. And we thought, huh, what it could be? And we decided, wait a second, we could use it um, a vacuum cleaner, right? If you use vacuum cleaner, it will suck out only dry powder. It will not touch this dense wet pit, right? 
And after that, we found out that actually it is not a theoretical system. Uh, uh, in engineers from Finland really designed such a vacuum cleaner. Look, it is a huge, just, you know, giant vacuum cleaner, which has nozzles, and these nozzles collect uh, dry peat. Look, what about selectivity? Perfect. It collects only dry peat, and it collects all peat. It doesn't lose anything. Very good. But what about disadvantages? What about cost? It is very expensive. Plus, it um, spends a lot of fuel. I don't know. Probably it spends more fuel than it collects. Moreover, what about productivity? Here we have 19 meters, actually, because of angle, the 17 meter uh, uh, effective uh, range, right? But here, look at these nozzles. Just I don't know, two, three, four meters, no more. Plus, what about speed? Our bulldozer moves like a rocket, very fast. And this one moves very, very, very slowly. Can you see? We have two systems. One is fast, productive, and expensive, but not selective. Second one is very selective, but very slow and very expensive. It's perfect. Uh, situation to apply feature transfer. First of all, we need to decide what system will be base system. Of course, bulldozer, because it is uh, inexpensive and simple, right? And now we need to think, huh, what feature allows this vacuum cleaner to be so effective, so selective? Why is it so selective? And you know why? Because it applies a what uh, air jet as a working component. What component actually collects, moves uh, the dry peat, dry powder? Airflow, right? Air jet. That is why. What feature should be transferred to our um, bulldozer, to our blade? Air jet, airflow. Let's combine our blade with the air flow. And what solution we found? Look, with this um, uh, bulldozer blade, we decided to make it hollow and we installed to the, uh, the uh, tractor a compressor. And compressor just provides a compressed air in, inside uh, the, uh, the blade. And there are some holes. Uh, can you see some, some holes um, uh, behind uh, the blade? Uh, that is why, look, and blade is up, right? We lifted it up. Uh, that is why it collects majority of dry peat. It doesn't touch uh, wet peat. But this compressed air, which goes down, collects dry peat uh, from uh, some uneven surface, right? Look, like that. Can you see? Look, we combined effectiveness, low cost, and high productivity of a uh, bulldozer blade and high selectivity of um, vacuum cleaner because we applied this water jet or air jet. You know, air jet doesn't sucks, um, uh, doesn't suck uh, the uh, dry peat. It just moves it. But who cares, right? Uh, it, it's still very selective. Actually, uh, we applied some, you know, super effect. We added some holes to the uh, front surface of the uh, blade. That is why air works as a lubricant. It reduces friction between a dry pit and blade. That is why pit moves easily along the blade. That is why we managed to reduce angle. That is why we also increased, uh, you know, it became wider. It collects more pit uh, during each cycle. Uh, that is why, look, we even managed to increase uh, productivity a little bit, okay? But in general, uh, we increased productivity because we collected 
all the right pits. We didn't lose anything. Plus, we provided very high quality of the product. Can you see? Uh, this is idea. Can you see how feature transfer works? The same approach, two systems, advantages, disadvantages. We identify feature, we transfer feature, and we solve uh, adaptation problem, and that's it. Uh, here I have just number of examples from different areas, and you can see that all these systems are results of feature transfer. Um, look, uh, the left one, it is combination of bicycle and scooter, right? Uh, it is as convenient as a bicycle because you sit on it, right? But as simple as scooter because it doesn't have pedals, doesn't have transmission, anything, you just use your legs uh, to move it. Uh, this uh, flying uh, machine, it is combination of uh, airplane and helicopter because it has a rotor like helicopter but doesn't have a motor on it. Uh, it has just a propeller which pushes us up. Uh, uh, next one is combination of airplane and uh, uh, balloon. Right, or uh, the sailing boat and steamboat, and so on and so forth. And the last one, uh, just we have uh, there two uh, alter systems, right? Half uh, person, half horse, and half uh, woman, half fish, you know, just it's funny kind of example. But uh, these two examples illustrated um, engineering problems. But I promised you that the same methodology can be used for non-technical problems, for example, for, for financial problems. And here I have another example. Uh, it's about uh, loan approval. Um, uh, you know, it was in, uh, we performed this project for one Russian bank, and um, it, it was it was necessary to, uh, to provide loans for persons, not for companies, but for, for its personal loan. And um, uh, now we are talking about large loan, a lot of money. And according to the Russian law, just uh, to provide the loan, it is necessary to identify the person who takes the loan. And for this identification, it is necessary, according to the law, uh, the person should physically visit bank and uh, the bank representative should just identify, aha, uh -huh, uh, just uh, look at passport or something uh, and just identify the person. But it's kind of very inconvenient process. People need to just to leave the offices and to go to the bank to another part of city and, you know, uh, the, they don't like them because they start online. You know, you just do it online and you will get approval online. It's fast. Do, 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 do. You know, 20 minutes and you answer a few questions, your salary, da, da, da. okay, approved. But you cannot get it because you need to visit bank uh, and people just say, ah, you know, I will not go there. And uh, this way a bank uh, loses a lot of potential customers and people lose opportunities to get a loan. Both, uh, both sides are unhappy. It is, it is necessary to do something. But you know, let's try to find alternative system, and we found it. It is so-called micro loans, small loans. If you are talking about a relatively small amount of money, according to the law, it is not necessary uh, to insist to physical, uh, of, on the physical visit of the person to the bank. It, it is possible to identify this person remotely, you know, using his or her uh, mobile phone, you know, there, there are different methods how to do it. Look, but it works only for small money. Look, we have two systems, large loan and micro loan. One is uh, very simple and easy to, to get, but just a small, small amount of money. Second provides advantage with huge money, but it's very complex and slow approval process. And now we need to combine these two systems and develop the procedure where 
we will provide a person a large loan without a physical visit uh, of the bank. Okay? How to do it? And we just need to, um, uh, to understand why second um, system doesn't need physical visit. Uh, look, because we provide the small money, it's a contradiction, right? We need to provide large money because people need it. But also, we need to provide person a small amount, small money, just to be able to, ident to identify the person remotely. It's a contradiction, right? And uh, we have, it's another our problem solving tool, we cannot discuss it now, but there are different methods of um, resolving such contradiction. And one method is very interesting, separation on system level. It means that each part of the system has one property, but entire system has opposite property. Like this funny example, you know, each fish is small, but entire this uh, entire uh, it's like a very huge fish can you see a fish is small and fish is large at the same time because we created these contradictory requirements on system level and we apply this method okay all system all loan should be large but each part of the system should be small and what solution we found Instead of this huge loan, a bank will offer to the client a credit line. Okay, and in this case, the client could be identified remotely, and this guy will be able to get money immediately, but not all money, only few small portions. But after that, when Okay, uh, he already got the money. It means that we will not lose uh, this client, right? And when it will be necessary to get more and more money, we will uh, just um, uh, invite this person to visit bank. And later on, because you know, it, uh, there is no rush, just in any convenient time, uh, you know, a person will visit bank and complete the uh, identification process. Can you see? We just achieved both goals. Uh, we just uh, provided, uh, uh, you know, large loan uh, without physical visit, almost without physical vi physical visit of bank, because people will get money with remote identification. Can you see? This method is applicable not only for pieces of metal, right, but also for financial sector too. And the last portion is application of this method for non-technical problems. Let's say for managerial problems. And look, uh, all, uh, periodically all managers meet the same problem. It is necessary to prevent somehow inappropriate behavior of people. Doesn't mean doesn't matter. Uh, it could be your uh, just employees or what, whatever citizens. Just any any people. And as a manager, you need to do something to prevent some inappropriate behavior. And what is a typical approach? What manager typically do? Uh, let's um, just use some, let's just prohibit uh, this uh, behavior and let's punish people if they uh, misbehave. What, any types of punishment, you know. Easy, right? And actually it works, you know, if people are aware that uh, in case of misbehavior they could be, uh, could experience severe punishment, probably they will avoid such behavior, which is good, right? Advantage kind of, uh, the approach works, but it has a huge disadvantage, you know, there are a lot of kind of uh, costs associated with this method. Well, not necessarily uh, money-wise cost. I mean, uh, you need to have a lot of 
uh, people who could control behavior. We need to control people who control. We need to manage all of them. It could be expensive. Also, if you apply punishment for people, all people have friends and relatives, and you will you will lose your reputation. People, if you are company manager, people will hate you. People will just leave uh, the company where they experience such uh, severe punishment because all people uh, believe that uh, they uh, were innocent and this punishment is excessive and so on and so forth. A lot of disadvantages associated with this method. What could be alternative system? Let's do not punish. Let's do not um, uh, prohibit anything. Just guys, uh, we are allowed to do it whatever you want. What is good about it? Look, it costs nothing to us, right? We don't need to control, we don't need to punish, everything is okay. But there is a disadvantage. Just people misbehave. You just, as a manager, you experience this problem. Now let's combine these two methods. And as a base system, we will select absence of punishment. Guys, no punishment, but somehow we need to transfer something from another system. What, why, why punishment works? You know, uh, actually, uh, because usually we do not punish people. We ju they are uh, just, uh, they know that they could be punished. And what is bad about punishment? It is unpleasant for people. People will know if they misbehave, uh, there will be something unpleasant for them. That is why they try to avoid this situation. Let's do not punish people, but let's provide something unpleasant to them. And if misbehavior will be connected to something unpleasant stuff, Probably people will avoid such approach. Okay, let's. Um, I will provide you a few historical examples how it worked. It worked in the past. Look, just um, medieval friends and um, among um, young female aristocrats emerged, uh, you know, strange, strange behavior. Um, they decided that it is very cool uh, to drive horse carriages by themselves. But look, even, you know, even can control one horse is not easy task. Actually, it is, uh, you should be professional, you should know how to do it. But if you have two or probably four horses, it is a real difficult work. Only real professionals can do it. Plus, uh, remember, uh, it, it is in medieval Paris, very, very narrow streets. There are there were a lot of people around and these young female aristocrats couldn't uh, know how to do it effectively. Plus, they didn't care about simple piece people. That is why there were a lot of kind of uh, collisions. They just uh, killed and, uh, you know, the, the wounded a number of people. People were not happy about it. And uh, the prime minister of France in, that, in this time was Cardinal Richelieu. And he was a great person, very smart. But he understood that he couldn't prohibit this behavior because remember, he was aristocrat, but they are also aristocrats. Uh, and they, uh, you know, used to uh, use uh, uh, their own carriages. There were no street rules in that time. That is why there was no kind of legal uh, methods uh, how to stop it. But it was necessary to stop. How to stop without a punishment, without prohibition? And he just decided to attach to this behavior something unpleasant. It will be not punishment, but it will be as unpleasant as punishment. And he just declared, if you prefer to drive carriages, be my guest. It is allowed to anybody. But 
uh, this uh, process is uh, very difficult and uh, kind of uh, the driver has a lot of responsibility. That is why this, uh, you know, driving is allowed only for women older than 35 years. But you know, there are no uh, alive uh, French women uh, older than 25 years, right? And overnight, no one drove uh, the carriage anymore because no one uh, wanted to admit that she is older than 35 years. That's it. Can you see? We combine both approaches punishment and not punishment and uh, now we have both both advantages right um, actually we stopped misbehavior and uh, we, uh, we didn't pay for it that's it another example let's go to another country another time now it is a, a russian empire and in that time uh, Russian Empire uh, was ruled by um, Catherine the Great, Catherine the Second. Okay, and in that time there was emerged some very strange behavior of young, um, in this case, male aristocrats. Because of some reasons, they decided to wear very long white gloves like that very very long white gloves and also they used uh, you know these uh, lorettes like that you know they just look uh, looking through lorettes uh, Catherine just hated this behavior she didn't like but she couldn't prohibit it because well it is kind of, uh, it is harmless, uh, you know, people wear what they want, uh, people just look at, uh, through Larnets, but it's their decision. Uh, there were no kind of rational reason uh, to prohibit it. Uh, but she was very smart person and very practical person. And she applied the same approach, feature transfer. She decided not to prohibit it, not to punish for it, but she decided to attach something unpleasant to this behavior. What she did? She just commanded that all uh, street cleaners should wear these very long white gloves and they should have larnets. And young aristocrats decided what? we are not going to look like uh, street cleaners and once again overnight uh, this behavior disappeared just disappeared nobody did it can you see different times different countries different situations there is nothing uh, in common between two situations uh, but approach was the same uh, no prohibition no punishment, but it was necessary to attach something unpleasant to this behavior and people will voluntarily avoid this behavior. It's exactly what they need, we need, right? And the last example, just problem for you, we will solve it together. Look, there is a road in front of your company. And uh, people can intersect uh, uh, this road safely, but for this purpose, it is necessary to go 50 meter there, intersect the street and go 50 meter back. Not that much, right? And there is a sign, a road sign, just please intersect the road here. But people don't like to go there uh, and they prefer to intersect the road just like that, but it is uh, dangerous for them. And uh, some of your employees could be damaged in case of uh, a collision, uh, car incident, right? And actually, you don't like to lose your employees. Also, it will be necessary to pay uh, them, you know, to recover and so on and so forth. We need to stop this misbehavior somehow. But what can we do? Of course, we could put the policeman here, right? But it will be cost you a lot. But remember, let's apply the same approach, no prohibition, no punishment, but let's attach something unpleasant 
to this misbehavior. When people will intersect the road in the wrong place, it will be something unpleasant to them. They will admit that, well, they are not very good people. And there are a number of approaches and uh, just very similar to approach uh, Cardinal Richelieu applied. I will provide you some, just one of potential solution. Let's apply this road sign in the wrong place uh, when people intersect uh, the street in the wrong place. It's like, okay, be my guest, intersect the street here. But in this case, you admit that you are Australopithecus. You know, the Homo sapiens intersect there and Australopithecus intersect here. Actually, it works, you know, people avoid this misbehavior. Okay, actually, uh -huh. uh, it's just few, uh, just a few more oh, slides. I cannot hear you. Okay. Uh, just uh, guys, last slides. Uh, last slides. Uh, how trees is applied? What? I cannot hear. Oh. I think Alex, somebody has unmuted themselves and they are speaking amongst themselves, not for you. Ah, not for me, okay. Not for Just... you. I think uh, Ravi Kumar Chitnis has unmuted his mic and he's speaking, so that's the sound in the background. Okay, uh, two more slides. Uh, just I told you that trees is heavily applied in different countries and at different companies. For example, on this graph, uh, you can see patent activity of General Electric, and this is one of uh, largest American companies, and they apply trees very effectively. Just now, there are more than 2,000 people trained in gen trees on different levels because there are different level of trainings. And look, we started training at 2000 uh, in 2007, and look from this year how patent activity of company increased. The same graph for Procter and Gamble. We started uh, at 19, in 1993, and look how patent activity of this company increased after we started the training there, and now thousands of people were trained in Procter and Gamble. And another slide at Samsung, South Korea. Um, actually, you also can see how patent activity growth, but not that fast uh, because uh, they uh, didn't apply training instead of they decided just to hire number of uh, trees masters, trees experts, and uh, actually it was necessary to spend some time when they got adapted there, but after that, when Samsung adopted this methodology, the patent activity increased dramatically. Can you see the, the, you can build the same graphs for any other companies? And I strongly believe that if your companies and your people, your students and professors would use this methodology, they would be the, uh, as effective as these engineers and scientists. And Actually, it's time for questions and answers. I would be ready, uh, would be glad to answer your questions. Hello, any questions? Hello. Yeah, Alex, we can hear you. Uh, do you have, do you have any questions? Okay, Alex, this is me here. So, good presentation. So I think uh, we will ask uh, Mr. Pravin Patil. Uh, in case you can just uh, ask the participants if there are any questions, we'll be glad to answer those questions for you. Okay. Sure, sure. Uh, can we have questions coming up from students and participants, please? No questions. Everything is absolutely clear, right? But um, uh, you know what, guys? 
if you have some questions uh, later on, you could um, uh, submit questions. Uh, uh, Narayan, do they have your contacts? No, we will share the contacts with them. Possibly uh, once this session gets over, we will have a short presentation of what the student chapter is by uh, Dr. Wankade, and then we will share our continents and then probably we can have the Q&A again going on. Uh, okay, just share with them uh, contacts in, if they, if people have some questions regarding sure. technology, sure. I, I will be, I would be glad to answer them. Sure, we'll do that. Yep. Okay, in this case, the presentation is over. Uh, thank you for your attention. There's one question coming. Uh, how does quiz methodology help? Everything depends on individual's creativity, isn't it? Question mark. Um, you know what? Actually, officially, this methodology was not designed to increase creativity. This methodology works as a multiplication coefficient. I have just analogy. Let's imagine that, you know, I am a regular person and if I would compete with some very good sportsman runner, right? And probably this good sportsman will overrun me very easily, right? Because my ability to run is quite limited. But if I would use bicycle, probably I would overrun this person. But look, bicycle doesn't have a motor, right? I use uh, my own power, but bicycle somehow organizes my power so effectively that I can overrun a very good sportsman, right? And our methodology works like a bicycle. You will use your own uh, creativity, your own capacity, but methodology will multiply it to the very large coefficient. If you are a regular engineer, you will become very good engineer. If you are very good experts, you will become a genius, right? It uh, multiply uh, your ability, but it is official goal. But uh, what I observed when people apply methodology on a regular basis, somehow even their own creativity increases. Okay, because this methodology goes inside your brain, inside your mind, and you think differently. It's like paradigm shift. You think much more creative, more effective and fast. And for uh, external observer, it looks like you have very strong intuition, like uh, somebody formulates problem for you and you almost immediately say, aha, uh -huh, I guess solution is somewhere here. But in fact, it is not a per se intuition. It's just inside your mind, methodology works and leads you in, in the right direction. This, uh, this is answer to your question. Okay, thanks Alex. Uh, there's one more question coming up here. It says, a trees or brainstorming? Uh, which is a better approach for engineers? Uh, you know, actually, uh, when you apply methodology, well, it's analytical part when you analyze the system, but in certain moment it is necessary to solve the problem and there is a tool, you apply the tool, but the tool doesn't provide you just literally solution. It provides you recommendation, but after that you apply brainstorming, but what brainstorming? Typical brainstorming, you brainstorm uh, on a th th 360 degree everywhere. Let's try here, 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 here. When you apply methodology, it's like directed brainstorming. You brainstorm in very, very narrow area, right? In this case, there is a very limited number of variants and you just brainstorm one, one two, three, four, oh, I have a solution. That is why application of methodology is much, much more effective than just, uh, you know, uncontrollable brainstorming. We know it for sure. We just compare. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks, Alex. Uh, there's one more question coming up. Uh, can you give an example of cost benefit analysis associated with any solution, please? Oh, uh, you know, uh, actually, probably 30 or 40% of our projects are about cost reduction. 
and uh, sometimes our customers ask us to reduce cost to let's say five percent ten percent sometimes they ask us about cost reduction in order of magnitude uh, let's say 10 times for example right now i in the process uh, i am performing project for uh, together with my friends uh, to one israeli company uh, the goal is to reduce the cost of the product at least twice but in, actually they told us actually if you reduce cost three times it would be very nice uh, one time i remember when we performed project for um, Procter and Gamble, it was necessary to modify technological process of soap production. And we managed to reduce cost in order to magnitude about not 10 times, probably seven or eight times. Okay. Also, we performed another project for Procter and Gamble. It was necessary to develop new technology to produce paper. You know, the regular technology in, uh, according to regular technology, it's necessary to use a lot of water. You use this water to prepare this um, uh, pulp, right? Paper pulp. But after that, all other steps are actually uh, developed to remove, uh, eliminate this water. Uh, mechanically, they apply mechanics, they apply heat, they apply vacuum a lot. That is why it is extremely, uh, you know, it has extreme energy consumption. That is why this process is extremely expensive. And we develop new process which doesn't include any water right well a little bit uh, that is why we reduce cost dramatically that is why my answer is yes you know we, we know how to reduce cost and we uh, we know that it is possible to reduce it really dramatically okay thanks alex uh, there's one more question coming uh, it says uh, of course, there is stress, as you mentioned, but there are several other techniques like Scamper, Six Sigma, Six Thinking Hats, Wave. How is stress different? Because okay. the other techniques also provide the structured way to analyze and solve problems. Yeah, actually, we, we performed number of just comparison. For example, if we are talking now about Six Sigma, actually, these two me methodologies are like compatible they're uh, just uh, you know six sigma is very good uh, when it is necessary to identify area where there is a problem and it is very good uh, in the process of optimization if you already have solution it it is necessary to adjust all parameters to get the best result right but it is not that good uh, in terms of problem solving actually uh, they have a dfss uh, it's kind of designed for six sigma but it doesn't have a good kind of methodologies like a brainstorming right and i remember how uh, we were invited to general electric um, uh, they have very uh, effective kind of six sigma department and uh, they use Six Sigma very heavily, very intensively, but they found out that Six Sigma itself is good, but not good enough. And they decided to apply uh, some methods that could uh, add some power to Six Sigma and they perform benchmarking. They collected information about all available methodologists, m m methods and they just decided that trees is the best okay and after that they performed a second round of benchmarking they collected information about all trees providers and selected a few of them uh, including us and after that they performed a third uh, round of benchmarking they just uh, ordered uh, training workshops for each company and there were a group of people participated in all workshops and they were able to evaluate and they selected us as a trees providers and during many years you know i used to visit uh, general electric just uh, once uh, 
per month or two times per month uh, just you know it's about a three hour driving i just used to drive there in and out all the time and we trained a lot of people there and it was this training was very effective after that uh, we prepared the own internal trainers and they started uh, uh, the own training and uh, according to company rules uh, all projects include this uh, trees part and as a result they just uh, made statistics and they made decision i mean conclusion that uh, average project the R&D project became 30 percent shorter. Would you imagine 30 percent shorter? It's huge money, huge impact. Okay, and we compared it, uh, our methodology with another methods, and you know our methodology is more more effective because it is very kind of de well developed, formalized, pure rational. That is why it is transferable, it is teachable, right? It is not like a master and apprentice, master and apprentice. No, they can teach a lot of people because you can see this methodology is pure rational. Uh, I didn't explain your rules. I just provided you, but there are some rules, some recommendations, how to do it step by step. By step. As a result, everybody will be able to do it. That is why we strongly believe, and according to our experience, experience of our friends, uh, trees is one of the best methodologies. Okay. Uh, Method. I mean. Okay, Alex, thanks for this. Uh, there's one more question. In fact, since this entire audience is from, uh, most of them are from academics, I'm sure most of them will be like liking to know how trees can benefit academicians, especially in case somebody wants to get their PhD and a student who is pursuing his uh, engineering degree, what are the prospects for him uh, if at all he gets exposed to TRIS at this level? So two questions in this. One, how is TRIS beneficial for students and how is TRIS beneficial for faculties and academicians who want to pursue their PhD? Uh, okay, let's separate. Let's take um, postgraduate students who are preparing their PhD thesis. When you prepare your PhD thesis, you need to, de to develop some uh, engineering system. You need, uh, right, to, uh, as a result, you, you need to solve some inventive problems. And it would be nice if you demonstrate not only pure scientific results, but also you reduce it to practice. And look, I, I, I got, uh, you know, two patents, three patents, and look, I have scientific results, I have engineering results, I have uh, commercial results, right? Uh, the, but uh, in this case, application of methodology is perfect because first of you, first of all, it dramatically accelerates the process. Instead of month, you will spend days. Believe me, days instead of month, hours instead of weeks. It works very effectively. Uh, one friend of mine uh, is associate professor of MIT and he's a trees master uh, like me and he just uh, teach people and another friend of mine he's professor of one of chicago university and also he used trees to teach his students and uh, these postgraduate students apply this methodology effectively to prepare their thesis and uh, for academicians look uh, also, uh, professors are scientists. They do not only, uh, you know, teach uh, students. They also make some uh, scientific development, scientific research. Uh, but methodology can help uh, in different areas. For example, when you make research, you apply some gadgets, you apply some, you know, tools, and it is necessary to uh, improve these tools, uh, to develop new tool. And this methodology works perfectly in this area. Moreover, there is a special type of methodology which can help to solve scientific problems. It is not how to improve something, but how to explain something and uh, i just were involved in few such projects um and i know how it works it really works you know when uh, but because you are not going to solve problem why do i have such phenomena instead 
you just invert the problem. You think how to make this phenomena. If I would be uh, almighty God, what I would do to make this phenomena happen. Okay, and you just uh, apply, use uh, it like inventive problem. You solve it. Aha, uh -huh. I can do it this way, this way, and that way. And this solution could be a hypothesis. After that, you test uh, these hypotheses one by one. And usually the most elegant one is true. And now uh, you can make discovery. Okay, it is one uh, one idea and second idea how to apply methodology when you teach students, because usually how do we teach students? We provide them solutions like like uh, today we will learn how to uh, calculate strength of the bridge. Tomorrow we will uh, learn how to calculate, uh, you know, parameters of electrical motor. We provide them solutions, solutions, solutions. It's like we fill out a large vessel with some knowledges. And they think that um, this engineering uh, work and scientific work, it's like you meet the problem, you go to this uh, library internal, take some existing solution and apply. But what if there is no existing solution there? And people can do nothing. But we can uh, teach uh, our students differently. Instead of providing them solutions, you can formulate to them a problem. For example, guys, uh, it's kind of uh, general physics optics. Today we will decide how to measure the speed of light. Go ahead, guys. There is a problem how to measure speed of light. Of course, you cannot use st stopwatch uh, to measure it because it is too fast. Okay, guys, uh, develop a method how to measure uh, speed of light. It is a problem and you will apply methodology and you will develop some solution. Okay, let's use, you know, um, uh, interference of light, la la la, and, uh, in, uh, you know, formulas, it's easy part. You can find formulas uh, using Google, but you need to apply these formulas to solve the problem. You will incorporate methodology into your training, uh, training uh, process. It will be very creative, but remember, if your students invent something, uh, just, um, you know, internally, it will be their solution. They will never forget it, believe me. They will internalize it. I know one guy uh, decided to teach history or to school students using this approach. Because what is history? It's kind of bunch of facts. This king did this. This, uh, you know, tsar did that. But instead, this teacher used to provide his students problems. Okay, you are a king. It is your kingdom. You sit on the throne, right? But look, uh, you need money to, uh, to have better army because you have enemy. And if your army is small, this enemy will attack you and you will lose your kingdom at all. Okay, where to get money? You need to increase, you can increase taxes. Well, um, uh, people uh, will not be happy uh, and probably they will be like a riot or uh, they will just, uh, you know, the economical activity will go down and you will get less money if uh, the taxes would be smaller, right? Okay, it's like a contradiction. Increase taxes, you will kill the, kill the economy. Reduce taxes, uh, uh, you know, you will not have money to uh, maintain your army. Go ahead. Look, uh, to be a king, it is not to sit on the throne with the crown. To be a king, it, uh, it means to solve uh, very difficult problems. Go ahead. Can you see, if you apply methodology, your trainees, your students will be very creative. They will be ready to meet some non-standard difficult problems and solve them using all existing tools. Plus, if necessary, they will immediately solve it developing a new tool. Is it a good answer to your question? Ryan? Okay, uh, yeah, there's one more question coming here. Uh, 
the gentleman is finding it difficult to convince his management about the benefits of trust as compared to scamper six thinking hats or wave which they already follow in the company so what should we do or rather what should he do uh, probably uh, uh, he could try to convince um, uh, his managers to invite somebody from our side and we know how to convince managers uh, we have a good presentations we can answer professionally answer all the equations plus you know there is a um, kind of uh, strange effect that there are no prophecies uh, you know in your country uh, people somehow rather will listen uh, people from outside than their own employees that is why the standard standard an answer invite us and we, uh, we will take care about it okay that's a crisp answer alex and there's one more question which says uh, how is stress helpful for creative thinking for problem solving i already answered this question first of all methodology multiplies your ability to solve problem dramatically you, because methodology it is compressed crystallized and verbalized experience of thousands of best inventors in the world you will use the experience as a tool uh, it's like you have uh, behind you all these inventors they will help you that is why your ability to solve problems your creativity will be increased dramatically for you problem solving will not be something extraordinary oh my god what should i do you know i have a problem i don't know what to do how to solve it no for you it will be just a routine process okay i have this problem ah what kind of ah, this one in this case this particular tool is most applicable okay step one step two step three here we go we have solution i have analogy like let's imagine we have a fire uh, for uh, just uh, you know how many times in your life you experienced fire hopefully uh, never right but probably one time that is why for us fire is something extraordinary we don't know what to do but for five firefighters it is day-to-day -day activity they do it practically every day they know what to do step by step first step second step third step how to save people how to fight the fire how to distinguish the fire right for them it is routine activity and methodology work the same for you problem solving will not something extraordinary it will be a routine activity very simple <gasps> like that okay i will solve this problem right now okay and i observed it on myself and other people around me it's easy to solve the problem nothing special yeah all right alex okay uh, one more question alex uh, how does tris take care of the cultural expectations or is it that a part of defining the problem effectively you know um, uh, we conducted a lot of tris trainings at intel and once we were invited to internal tris conference at intel and there was a one uh, just uh, presentation one girl uh, presented interesting information she uh, because inside Intel uh, company just uh, used to organize tra people travels around the world because Intel has uh, the fabs everywhere and this young woman um, uh, traveled around the world and she visited different countries and she used to make experiment uh, in every place she used to take uh, two groups of people one group of engineers who uh, who were trained in trees and set, second group who who was not trained and she provided them the same problem and asked to solve it and after that she just compared solutions from these groups and what she found out the, first of all of course people trained uh, with trees solved a problem much faster and better than provided better solutions moreover 
people who were not trained, their solutions were different from country to country because, you know, all countries have different cultures. That is why, you know, solutions were different. But people trained in trees offered her almost identical solutions regardless of cultural differences. It means that methodology is more powerful than cultural differences. It just provides the best solutions regardless of your culture, right? It's very good. It means that it is universal and it doesn't depend on culture. It just uh, applies just uh, uh, a rational part of your mind, not irrational. Okay? Right. Uh, Alex, well answered, and I think there's one more question coming, but I'm not very clear with this particular question. Uh, it says, if we reduce the cost of any entity, comes in new patent or innovation? Question mark. So probably what he wants to ask is, if we reduce the cost of any entity, does it become a new innovation or a new patent? I, I uh, you, know, that way. Uh, you know, we do not patent results. We cannot part, oh, you know, um, my product became two times um, uh, cheaper uh, and this is my patent. No, we patent engineering solutions. Uh, we patent modification of the product. Okay, I just did this and that. Now my product consists of different set of components. They uh, interact differently. That is why my product is less expensive. And usually, you know, usually our solutions are patentable. When we perform uh, consulting projects, it's very typical, like additional desired outcome, uh, because we cannot promise that our solutions will be patentable. Because uh, we, uh, in general, we, if possible, we try to apply some existing technologies to solve problems because technologies always right uh, but in uh, many cases we invent something we cannot promise but usually usually if you have a good solution it is patentable moreover there is one part of our methodology we know how to deal with uh, patents uh, we know how to circumvent um, competitive patents and also we know how to protect our own patents against such tricks. We know how to formulate a patent formula in such a way that nobody will be able to circumvent it. It's part of our methodology. That is why we used to separately train uh, patent specialists of company. We provide uh, to them like a special topic seminar. We only teach them how to deal with uh, intellectual property. Thanks, Alex. Uh, one more question. Uh, how does uh, TRIS differ from design thinking? Is it competition or is it complementing? Well, Actually, both. Uh, you know, design thinking has just few tools. Uh, it is, you know, uh, I just uh, uh, I uh, analyzed it and I read articles, and uh, some of them kind of was kind of very negative. It's like, ah, you know what, design thinking is just common sense. Uh, just wrapped in some uh, scientific terms or something like that. Uh, well, I'm not going to say it because it is not my words. I just, it's citation from article. Uh, but you know, in general, our methodology is well formalized uh, and very complex, uh, such a way that our tools like overlap. If you didn't find solution here, you will find the same solution here or here or here. Plus, it is like algorithm, you know, it's like a you know, product processor. It just process uh, the information and as a result, uh, you will have very good recommendation how to find solution. That is why I strongly believe that our methodology is more powerful. Thanks, Alex. Uh, I don't see any more questions coming up in the chat box. Uh, a question from, or rather a suggestion or a request from my side. Uh, not many people in this audience are aware about the history of press. So can you just touch upon uh, for five minutes about the history of press, how it originated and how it is getting advanced in today's world? 
Ah, okay. Uh, very brief description. Very brief uh, description. Yeah. Yeah. It started just after um, Second uh, war, uh, World War. Uh, there was a young person, Henry Altshuler. He graduated uh, Navy College and he got very strange assignment. He became a patent clerk. Okay. Uh, his role was uh, to uh, just uh, to help his fellow officers to prepare um, uh, patent papers. But he found out that actually, yes, he can help them to prepare papers, but solutions themselves were not that good. Not that elegant, but very simple direct solutions. And he decided to help them. He tried to find literature, but he didn't find anything. Well, he found brainstorming a few more tools, but he didn't like them. He was young and brave, and he decided uh, to create his own tool. And he had two available resources. He had a lot of time and access to uh, world patent collection. And he analyzed, uh, first of all, he separated kind of elegant, interesting patents from uh, primitive patents and analyzed only elegant one. And he analyzed thousands of patents and he found out that actually there are in different engineering areas, there are typical problems, you know, in different areas, engineers all the time meet the same problems, not exactly the same, but types of problems are the same. And he just verbalized them. But look, if you have typical problems, probably you have typical solutions. And he identified these typical solutions. And from this point, he started a trees. Uh, uh, just uh, as a pro uh, he called it a theory for inventive problem solving because he thought that okay uh, it is necessary to develop problem solving tool okay and he started from here after that he started uh, well in between actually he tried to implement this methodology in former Soviet Union and he just wrote open letter to Joseph Stalin to everybody look let's use this methodology he was immediately arrested and sentenced to death punishment after that this um, uh, sentence was replaced to the 25 years in concentration camps he survived there but he served only four years there because stalin died he was released and he, st he started uh, training just and he and his followers started to develop this methodology uh, they started to develop more and more problem solving tools and improving these uh, problem solving tools after that after perestroika uh, you know uh, iron cur uh, curtain collapsed and a number of trees experts uh, left the country and now they live all around the world and they delivered uh, trees there and we commercialized it we, uh, and we found out that problem solving per se is not good enough it is necessary to add another piece uh, just before you solve the problem you need to identify what problem should be solved and now remember my road map there is a huge part analytical part where we do not solve anything we just i analyze our product or our technology or our service and we analyze it and we need to identify so-called key problems this hidden deep inside hidden problem that should be solved to achieve project goal moreover now we know even how, how to identify project goal because before you identify project goal you need to decide what product should be improved because probably your company produces a lot of different products and your R&D department works on number of scientific problems uh, and we, we know how to identify needs what parameters should be improved in this product we have special type of methodology dedicated for it moreover we incorporated to our methodology strategic part developed not for engineers it's not about nuts and bolts but for top managers strategic part which recommends in what direction you should develop your method technology what to do and what not to do okay now we have really comprehensive you know methodology 
it is very practical it is not theoretical not academical because we are practitioners we just make money applying this methodology to solve real difficult problems for clients and share this methodology to everybody we just ready to share. guys spend time go ahead and we will we will provide you everything we know about is it okay yes alex uh thank you i, I think it was a pretty short description about how trace got originated and how it is getting advanced today uh, i think it was a wonderful Probably I should add a few more words that now there is an uh, international trees association called Matriz. Uh, you can just f f use a keyword Matriz and you will, there is a site and you will read about it a lot. And we have a special kind of, um, uh, kind of procedure of uh, uh, certification, there's five level of certification. It's just uh, trees is everywhere now. Yes, yeah. thank you, Alex. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation and thank you for your time. And uh, in case there are more questions, I have already shared uh, your email address as well as my email address to all the participants. So in case we get some queries, we will be happy to answer those. Uh, okay. Thank you once again. And okay. I would like to invite. Yeah. Thank you for your attention. Bye. Thank you, Alex. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Sandeep Vankade, uh, who is the chairman for the TRIS chapter for uh, TRIS Association of Asia. So he'll be sharing his experience and also the services which pro we provide under the TRIS chapter. Sandeep Vankade. Yeah. I understand like uh, when Alex is speaking, it is uh, very difficult to stop him. And it is so interesting, but uh, like uh, time is always a constraint. So I'll quickly go through what uh, we are doing under the TRIS chapter. Basically, it's something just as uh, one uh, slide on Atris Asia that we are a regional representative of Matris, as just mentioned by Alex, and we have like a uh, tie up with around 8000 plus scientists worldwide. And we do have PhDs, IIT graduates and level three professionals working for us. Uh, if you have not heard Atris in academics, so let's see how many books are published. These are uh, very less, they are just sample. In, these are in 40 languages also. There countries which are uh, following uh, trees in their curriculum there are more than hundreds of universities which are having it in their curriculum or as a value added courses where can trees help uh, so basically it is for ug pg projects and definitely for phd i won't say more on that because alex has already mentioned more about it then phd and research for professors cutting down time significantly we all understand what is the uh, like uh, value of time as on date and r d uh, definitely entrepreneurship of startups we know the strength of startup a single person can do wonders recently like yulu has uh, been take, uh, like funded by uh, bajaj auto around uh, 8 million dollars uh, okay which amounts to i suppose around 70 crore rupees then campus placement and we have uh, actually this chapter i'm running since uh, long in ISSMS college of engineering and there are many other institutes who are also starting with it and um, also started with it, but probably uh, World Peace University would be first university. And we'll be holding hand right from curriculum development up to the value of small courses within this. Okay, campus placement, as I was just mentioning, that when we go through this, the creativity increases and instead of having one answer, we always have multiple answers. And at the same time, our mind also processes for the secondary question, as Alex has mentioned, that we basically are not going towards solution, we are generating or formulating new problems. And these new problems are always there. Whenever we solve one problem, there would be definitely a secondary problem. And what we need to do is think of the secondary problem in advance so that we can cut down the time at a later stage. Okay, so there won't be any mugging up a quick gist of uh, with whom we are uh, working as a training and a curriculum. So it is right from uh, this is particularly of our team only. We I'm not mentioning about uh, uh, everyone right here. So these are some colleges like yes, some mind college, then mega group of institute, Cummins College, and wherein uh, these were all uh, faculty members here, faculty plus master students were there, faculty plus students right from uh, like a costing also economics also there were some students and they are very happy and they are saying that they are using it in uh, their uh, projects very well. Then in symbiosis we are having hand holding Gujarat Technological University and recently three days course was done in Guru Govind Singh College in Nasik and which has got, uh, inaugurated our chapter also recently. These are all the colleges with whom which uh, we are having. These are some of the companies which Trees Asia is having the, the um, 
association right now. Then uh, preamble is like there is development and application methodology for development of innovative abilities of a person. See, we do not want a person or a student to get graduated with some a flowery or a very good uh, marks on his mark sheet. We want him to be a troubleshooter. As uh, Alex has just mentioned, firefighting should be his uh, the routine practice. So innovation should be the routine practice. And we have uh, observed that this actually happens. And we do uh, operate in mentorship, patent inspiration, knowledge transfer session, capability building, distance education. I would just like to add a point to Alex, like this, this technology is basically in, uh, started or developed from patents. So that is why, as he was mentioning that, it is not like we just give the solution and ask the students to solve the problem. Basically, when we say what is the best kind of uh, uh, research work done, so if it is getting a patent awarded. So this is exactly, finding out what how the patents are awarded and uh, uh, Alchular has Alchular was the founder of it he has found many ways in which he can just ensure that uh, every student he does a work which will be foolproof work and at the same time would be really innovative okay and of course whenever i say minded that it will be in very short time so to nurture the creative pot uh, potential lifelong uh, learning in the domain through systematic innovative problem solving i'll not go through all of these things i have just mentioned them and uh, purpose is to like what would be the benefit to the students so they will be associated with an international professional body i've just shown with whom we are working at a national level and even we are having international level so definitely uh, some part of that whichever would have been finished and brought in the market this would be shared with the uh, students at a later stage and it will be all real life case studies it won't be something like just from the book and uh, the experience of others so def uh, we have very good experiences in placement startups and again, uh, these things I'll just go up. So uh, this is what I just wanted to mention in this case. And at the end, uh, I would uh, like uh, take an opportunity to thank Dr. Uh, Chitney sir and um, Praveen Patil sir, Milan Pandey sir, and all those who have uh, put all their efforts in making this uh, um, program successful. And Definitely, most is uh, credit goes to Mr. Alex being Saturday, being early morning. He has shared time for us. So with this, I stop. Whatever details you want uh, from our side, definitely uh, Mr. Narayan has shared our contacts. So um, feel free to contact us at any point of time and we are ready to handhold. Anything else you would like to know more about um, uh, this chapter, I would be happy to answer. But understanding the value of time, I am trying to keep it as short. Patil, sir. That is cool. uh, thank you very much, Sandeep ji. Thank you very much, Narayan and Sandeep. That, uh, that was a very good uh, overview on takes. Uh, it, it was certainly informative. I'd, I'd invite uh, 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 Dr. Ravi Kumar Chitnis to please come and convey his concluding remarks. Uh, or if he has any questions, we can put up any questions. Uh, Dr. Kumar Chitnis, please. Hello, it was wonderful to hear uh, Mr. Alex on this Saturday morning for you, and it's a pleasant evening here in Pune, India. Your presentations were very lucid, and you have demystified the fog around this concept, and which were which we are not known to us, and definitely. If students and faculty of engineering are willing, we can start TRIS chapter at MIT World Peace University campus. Further, I wish to invite you to India, to our university in the forthcoming academic year and wish you all the best and have a great Sunday, a great weekend ahead. Thank you and dhanyavad as we say in Indian way. Namaskar. Namaskar, sir. Thank you so much for all the support extended. And also want to uh, extend our wholehearted support, with, which is given by Dr. Sandeep Wankede and Mr. Narayan. We thank you on behalf of our executive president, president and our vice chancellors. Thank you, Dr. Sandeep, and thank you, Dr. Narayan. It's a pleasure, sir. Sir, is this Mr. Narayan? I'm not a Dr. Narayan. It's Mr. Narayan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you, sir.
you, ji. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, uh, Mr. Pravin Patil and the entire team, Rahul Nilesh, and the third person. Uh, and then uh, we are looking forward for more support from you for forthcoming such webinars. Have a great pleasure. evening. Our no pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank we you. declare the webinar is over. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a great evening ahead. Thank you. Stay home. Stay safe. Bye-bye.